Okay, we got cut off um, on this page in the last recording, and I I went ahead and did um, U U U as the original codon and transcribed as you you can see as U U U, and then translation makes it code for U U U codes for phenylalanine. Now the next thing I did is I mutated the original. I reset and mutated the original by making it a C, making a, the TTT a TTC in the, um, ori the original DNA. Now when I transcribe to RNA, it makes that codon, that second codon, a UUC. Now remember it coded for phenylalanine. Let's see what it codes for now. UUU coded for phenylalanine. And as it so happens, um, as it so happens, the uh, UUC is also coding for phenylalanine. So um, I put that information down here. The original codon was UUU, the mutated codon was UUC. The amino acid that both codons um, code for is phenylalanine. So that is a silent mutation. Um, now we're going to look at stop codons. And stop codons don't code for an amino acid. They signal the end of the protein. So um, if we look at that table, these are the stop codons, UAA, UAG, and UGA. So Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, do a substitution mutation and make the A a T. It transcribes the first codon to UGA. Now when we translate messenger RNA into protein, wow, the UGA is a stop codon, so it doesn't even make a protein. The protein isn't mutated, it's not made at all. So the snapshot's just going to be a the screen. And as you can see, a stop codon can do real damage. I mean, it can even prevent a protein from being made. Um, if that protein is an enzyme, that could affect, you know, whatever the enzyme um, controls. The mutated protein would be this. Compare the effects of a mutation that causes an amino acid change with a mutation that causes a stop codon. If the stop codon occurs early in the amino acid sequence. As for us, it just occurred at the very first uh, codon. Then the protein will have more damage. In this case, it was total damage. Um, and we're going to go to next. That's stop codon. And then now we're going to look at a frame shift effect. We're going to look at what happens. Um, it says synthesize the unmutated protein and take a snapshot. Well, we've already done that. Make an insertion mutation somewhere in the first half, half of the sequence. Synthesize your mutant protein and take a snapshot. So some, somewhere in the first half, I'm going to insert an A. All right, and I know that some mutations have occurred because if you remember, all of the amino acids past arginine were hydrophobic. Now I've got four that are hydrophilic, so I know there have been many mutations all down the line because where that mutation occurred here, everywhere down, 
for the rest of the um, sequence, the DNA sequence is going to be different. That's called a frame shift mutation. So you take a snapshot image that shows the mutant protein that is not the result of a frame shift. Well, they don't, they don't even. Why do insertion mutations have a bigger effect on, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Take a snapshot that shows the original protein before mutation. And the original protein was way back in the very first picture we took. This one, which had phenylalanine as the second one. But here you can see that they're all of the ones after arginine, after the first amino acid, are um, hydrophobic. And now we're going to put the mutated protein. See how different it looks? It's to totally different. And that's because every codon from the mutation point to the end of the RNA sequence is changed. So more amino acids will be changed. Challenge, make a combination of insertions and or deletions that do not cause a frame shift and then synthesize your mutant, mutant protein. Okay. Um, a combination of insertions and deletions. So that's, that is a challenge. I didn't do this with the, with the class yesterday, but let's see how we can do that. All right. Um, okay, I'm going to look at the codon table for um, this would be UUU and GGG in the messenger RNA. So let's look at that table. And if we insert a C for the U or, or for the, um, in the DNA, it's a T, a C for the T, And then we delete okay. the T. There we go. We delete that extra T. That'll do it. Okay. I just had to think through it. Okay. So what we're going to do is we are going to ins insert, um, I guess we would insert here, insert, um, what did I say, C, and that's not where I wanted to do it, so let's insert it here, insert C, and then we're going to delete that T, and let's see what happens. Phenylalanine, glycine, leucine, methionine. Um, phenylalanine and uh, glycine and leucine were the first four in the original. So, phenylalanine, glycine, and leucine. So, if this this is an insertion and a mutation that did not cause. I mean, I'm sorry, an insertion and a deletion together that. Um, that's not the image. I'm sorry. I didn't take a snapshot of it. I'm so sorry. Come up here, take a snapshot. Okay. And it looks like the original. Okay. How did you make insertion and or deletions that did not 
cause a frame shift. The insertion caused a silent mutation. And the deletion um, prevented a second mutation. Okay. Next. And this is the last page. Um, the process by which the genetic code of DNA is copied into a strand of RNA is called transcription. This, um, the DNA sequence TAG would make the RNA AUC. So that's the only one it could be. All right, DNA codes for messenger RNA every three nucleotides in messenger RNA is called a codon and codes for a specific amino acid. A protein forms from the amino acid chain. How many nucleotides would be needed to code for a protein with the following amino acid sequence? Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight amino acids, and each codon would be um, three nucleotides, so eight times three is 24. In cells that have a nucleus, the DNA is not able to leave the nucleus. How does the information in DNA make its way out of the nucleus so that it can be used in making proteins? Well, messenger RNA is much smaller and can leave the nucleus and carry the code to the ribosome in order to make a protein. Okay. How can a mutation have no effect? A silent mutation. We already talked about that, so I'm not going to elaborate. Which types of mutations among those you created in this activity are more likely to cause the biggest problem? It's going to be insertion, deletion, and possibly a stop codon. Now we're going to create the report. Oh, sorry. Okay. Create the report, print without login. And then what you would have to do is just open this up and screenshot everything. Um, so you can screenshot it and put it in a Word document all the way down to the end. 